the 24th chapter. This is the story, as Luke tells it, of the resurrection of our Lord. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. He went away wondering to himself what had happened. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scripture concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. What a marvelous story of those who encountered that early moment when Jesus came out of the tomb. We find three different sets of men who were involved in this experience. The first are the two men dressed in white. Angels, if you prefer, but they were the ones inside the tomb and when the early disciples came, they are the ones who said, why are you looking for him here? He has gone, just as he has told you. 
clearly these are divine beings clearly these are those who understood fully the mission and message of Jesus clearly these are ones who understood what was happening in all of its fullness but this these first sets of men are those who were present at the very outset it was a little bit later though that some other men came reluctantly notice how it is that that Luke points out and, and Luke is always uh, one who is deferential to women and notes in his text how the men did not even believe their story but Peter being Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb now some of the other gospels share with us it was Peter and John who ran to the tomb but they ran to the tomb and found that it was empty and then the third group of men are those two Cleopas is the only one whose name we know were walking along on the road to Emmaus we we do not have a clear idea a while why they were getting out of town but they were on their way to this village about seven miles outside of Jerusalem perhaps they were running uh, perhaps they were afraid after all that had gone on but as they walked along Jesus met them in disguise and shared with them and taught them as they walked along then you know the beauty of that story it is in the breaking of bread uh, that Jesus is revealed to them so we, we have three different experiences of men at this early tomb you know first are those who were present the divine ones the ones who had an idea what was happening uh, those who were uh, those holy companions of Jesus the, the ones who had been present in all of his ministry even to the point of their recognizing what he had told his disciples and called their attention to what it was that he had told them and so that is kind of the forerunner of what we discover of men who were there and they were present and they were companions of Jesus the the second group that we could look at we might want to call reluctant disciples you know they had lived with Jesus for the last three years uh, they had he heard his teaching they had experienced his life uh, they had heard what he had anticipated that he would be doing and yet they did not believe they did not believe the women who told them it was only when Peter gets up and runs to the tomb to see for himself didn't believe others he had to see for himself and as he put his head into the tomb and saw that it was empty then he walks away curious and confused about what is happening the third group of men that come to us on this story are those who are getting out of town they're running uh, they're running away from what has happened but they are caught in the middle of it all and Jesus appears to them reveals himself to them teaches them and finally brings to them the joy and wonder of recognizing who he really was we, we discover in all three of these men the glory and wonder of this day you know those holy ones who knew all along what has been happening knowing that God in his purposes has always been about the task of surrounding Jesus with love and grace and care and here are two of his companions holy companions if you would who are sharing that story <coughs> it is also a moment when we see the reluctance of disciples who have to see for themselves Luke is very good about revealing that to us 
and helping us to understand fully and completely how it is that Peter made his way to the tomb after not really fully believing what the women had said. And then finally, we find those who have run. They're descriptive of all of us, aren't they? You know, there are those who are the holy ones among us who really sit at the feet of Jesus and who understand what it is that Jesus is sharing in the midst of his life and wonder. We can all think of those people who have brought us to the tomb and who have taught us and who has said there in that place, remember everything that he told you. Remember what it is that, that Jesus has said. It is those holy ones, our mothers, our Sunday school teachers, perhaps some of our preachers, those good friends who've revealed to us, remember what it is that Jesus has told you. This is what he's going to do. And then let's remember Peter. Peter, with all of his reluctance, does get up and go. He puts energy into finding out what was really happening. He puts himself in a place where he has to discover fully. True, he didn't understand fully. He didn't get it all. And yet, Peter, as we love him so much, is one who teaches us so profoundly what it means to be fully human and to grasp the divine, grasp the holy. And finally, we have those who have run, who are trying to get away. You know, it's my hope that on this day, that those who are running, who are trying to get away from Jesus, uh, those who are moving away from what it is that God is seeking to do in their life, might find that he has walked alongside them too. That they might discover in their running that Indeed, this powerful experience of the gospel has a message for them, a revelation for them, new life for them. Perhaps it is these, these men, these ones who represent so many of us, who seek to have Jesus walk side by side with us and teach us as we go, as we sometimes run, as we sometimes go to another place, but we want Jesus by our side and Jesus comes in alongside and teaches us and makes himself known in the breaking of bread, makes himself known in new life, makes himself known in powerful and wonderful kind of ways. All of these men have something to teach us, but most important of all, the man of the hour, the man of the moment, the man of history is Jesus the Christ himself, the one who has did everything he told us he would do, who is present with us, the one who is walking with us, the one who loves us even in the midst of our not always believing, the one who walks with us when we try to escape, try to get away. Jesus, the man of all time, the man who touches our heart most profoundly, the one who touches us most deeply.
I read from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 1 through 2, and 11 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he has said these things to her. So often, all we know is death. We have loved ones who stand at the edge of death. We have loved ones who have been taken by death. We have death of relationships, death of friendships, death of dreams and aspirations, death of how we longed and thought our lives would be. It is an interesting thing to be exploring this passage, to be celebrating life, resurrection, Easter, when we still, as a community, as a world, reside in the midst of pain, fear, loss, uncertainty. We reside today in two worlds. We stand at the tomb, something that embodies sorrow, despair, absence, death. We stand in the midst of a pandemic, experiencing sorrow, despair, absence, death. It's here. It's real. Mary Magdalene woke up to pain of death before her. She remained there and could not imagine anything beyond it. She held the image of her teacher, dead, in the tomb. She held everything he had taught and lived, dead, in the tomb. Nothing else to offer. All that was left were cherished miracles and memories, dead in the tomb. Where else would he be? Though the angels attempt to bring light to Mary, light and life, her grief and pain will not allow her to release Jesus from death. They have taken away my Lord, 
and I do not know where they have laid him. A voice. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? I feel like I am turning to that sacred voice as well, saying, I'm looking for life. I'm looking for hope. I'm looking for light. How often do we hold life and light in the place of darkness, still in the tomb, absent, missing, taken, gone from our presence? How often do we hold Jesus in the place of death, still in the tomb? Absent, missing, taken, gone from our presence. We hold him dead and unable to Easter us through our grief and despair. Dead and unable to Easter us through our fear and conflicts. Dead and unable to Easter us from our brokenness dead and unable to Easter us from sickness. And yet, Jesus is so far from dead, so far from being gone from our presence today. Today, it is a world of life. Today, it is a world of light. I can hear Jesus' voice, the same for Mary Magdalene as it is for each one of us. For the world, my beloved, my beloved, Jesus calls out to us here and now, here as we stand right in front of the tomb. Jesus calls out to us in our weeping, in our searching, in our standing at the entrance of the tomb, trying to figure out where Jesus is. Jesus calls out to us, calls us out of the darkness, out of death, Turn to me, turn away from the tomb, turn to me and see where light and life is abundant. See where light and life reigns as one sits with another in the face of death, as neighbors care for neighbors, as strangers care for strangers. As the earth receives breath in our stillness. As we find new ways of remaining connected. Bringing our voice, our songs, our encouragement, our prayers to one another. Bringing good news to one another. The table expanding. Distance unable to break the deep bond of community. Turn to me. Turn away from the tomb. Turn to me and see where life and light is abundant. Today it is a world of life. Today it is a world of light. Jesus Eastered. Jesus Eastered Mary that morning. Jesus Easters us today. Christ is risen. Amen.